So our division, division um, gets the most submissions in advanced microscopy. And that's sort of been a trend for the last few years. Um, this year, the, we have a session in ultra high um, or super high resolution microscopy. Um, and we have another session in fluorescence lifetime, which is a new uh, contrast mechanism. And then there's a, a, a number of other novel sort of microscopy methods using adaptive optics and some others that use microendoscope um, or advancing microscope and microendoscope techniques. Other, other things that are spurning or spurring on the methods are the application areas. So you have advances or concepts in, for instance, neuroscience um, that are driving or sort of, sort of pulling new ways of uh, applying these methods out. Um, another sort of driving force, it's, it's an, maybe from the other side of it, we have advances in biochemistry related to molecular imaging. So there's a lot of um, sort of ways of reporting the molecular bio, biochemical activity within cells um, at the molecular level. And so advances in biochemistry there are sort of pushing forward a, a number of other um, advanced microscopy methods in another, uh, a number of other ways. A couple in, uh, contributed papers, and there are also invited talks related to ultra high resolution uh, microscopy, or I should say super high resolution uh, microscopy um, that sort of um, showcase those methods. Um, and what they're doing is the you know, normal, mic you know, traditional microscopy or basically any optical imaging um, aims to be diffraction limited. So the wavelength of the light determines the resolution that you can get. But these new methods have found sort of ways around, different ways of thinking about how you do the imaging. And they can go beyond um, the diffraction limited to generate images that have effective resolutions that are on the order of uh, a tenth the wavelength of light. Um, so this is actually a pretty dramatic jump in resolution. You know, factor, you know, order of magnitude, and when you start thinking about that in terms of three-dimensional imaging, uh, sort of volumetrically, you're making the volume that you're imaging, you know, a thousand times smaller than before.